So ladies and gentlemen, as we come into 2024, I want to talk about a danger, one danger that I see in all the different denominations. And the reason why I'm going to do that, brothers and sisters, is because I am an ecumenical Christian. I don't believe in sectarianism. I don't believe in denominationalism. I just believe in the body of Christ and that that body of Christ lives in all the churches. So I'm going to highlight one danger from each of the major denominations that we as Christians should be aware of and that we should try to pull our particular denomination away from. And that I'm offering you a list of minor errors and major errors so that it doesn't infect you in your walk. Now there's no gain away from it. I lean towards Catholic spirituality and a Catholic understanding of the faith, but I'm not Roman Catholic, despite what everyone keeps saying. I'm ecumenical. So I'll start with the Catholic churches first, and then I'll move into some of the major Protestant churches. So hopefully I'll pick on your church as well just let me get around to it. I'll pick on the other churches as well. Just let me get around to it, okay? And I won't spend too long on each one. One of the biggest problems that I see in Roman Catholicism is their propensity to turn everything into a spiritual devotion. Doesn't matter what the situation is, doesn't matter what the problem is, the answer from the priests is always, Let's say, let's say more Hail Marys. Let's say more rosaries. Let's offer up more prayer. There is a truth to the saying that you can be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. The reality is that when a car is broken down, you're not gonna fix it through prayer. That when a hungry person needs to be fed, you aren't going to pray a sandwich into existence that when Christians are being persecuted, you're not going to stop that persecution by shouting or praying quietly about it. Prayer is not the answer to every problem that the church faces. Ladies and gentlemen, as Christians, we need to make sure that we apply practical solutions that we learn from the studies of the humanities to the problems that the church faces. So there, that's the Roman Catholics. Now pick on the Eastern Orthodox. Eastern Orthodox churches have a problem with their susceptibility to nationalism. We see it playing out right in front of us right now where the Eastern Orthodox churches are literally killing one another in Ukraine. They're literally betraying one another in Armenia. Why? Because nationalism often means more to the Orthodox Christian than even other Orthodox Christians do. That is a danger that can divide Christian against Christian and make Christian fight Christian. That's what happened in World War I. That's what happened in World War II. That's what happened in the Crimean War. Christians fought Christians for nationalism and did not love the church enough. That is a danger that we must push our hearts against. Put your hand up if you're not born in Britain. But keep your hand up if you are a Christian. These are my brothers and sisters, regardless of what country they're born in. I refuse to join the British Army because the British Army started bombing Christian Serbs. And I would not participate 
in a war against Christians. If you want the war in Ukraine to end, what Ukraine and Russia need is more Christianity and less nationalism. That's the Orthodox. Now let me pick on the Coptic Church, the original African Church. The Coptic Church, because of 1400, 700 years, sorry, 1400 years of persecution by Muslims, has become shy about evangelism. It is afraid to do evangelism. But I want to remind my Coptic brothers and sisters that bringing people into discipleship with Christ is a command of Jesus, not an option of Jesus. There are lots of churches, lots of liberal churches in the West that don't believe in evangelism. I'm afraid you don't have a choice. It's there in black and white or red and white, depending on which Bible version you're using. Jesus commands that we do evangelism. It is not a choice. Roman Catholics, you've got to evangelize. Copts, you've got to evangelize. Orthodox, you've got to evangelize. Methodists, you've got to evangelize. Evangelism is not giving soup to the homeless. That's a good thing, but it's not evangelism. Evangelism is discipling people in the way of Christ. That's evangelism. So that's the Coptic Church. Let me talk about the Anglican Church, the Church of England. The danger of the Church of England is that it compromises with the culture too much. It wants the culture to pat it on the back and go, you're just like us, we like you, because you bless gay marriage, you celebrate trans ideology, you, you, be, you believe in gay marriage, you don't believe that Jesus is the only way to salvation. Compromising with the culture is the danger that Christians face all the time. Christians compromised with the apartheid culture in South Africa. The Dutch Reformed Church went along with apartheid South Africa. Lots of Christians went along with the Nazis in the Third Reich in Germany. Lots of Christians went along with the apartheid in America. Lots of Christians went along with slavery. Why? Why? Because those Christians compromised with the culture. You must learn the values of the kingdom of God. You must imbibe them. You must embody them. And if the culture contradicts you, then damned be the culture. Bring on the conflict. Let's go to prison. Let's do battle. Don't compromise your faith with liberal Western culture. Don't compromise your faith with liberal Western secularism. That is not the way of the Christian. That is an example of the Anglican church. Let me pick on the Baptist churches or the evangelical churches. There is nowhere in the Bible that it is the case that someone can appoint themselves as a leader of the church and start a congregation. That is not biblical. Everyone who started a church, every church was founded by an apostle and elders were appointed and there was a passing on of authority from those in authority to those who would be in authority. Church leaders are not self-appointed, nor does God appoint people as church leaders where the church would not recognize them as a church leader. The reality is too many churches, 
in the evangelical side of the church are founded by people who have just decided to set up their own church and are unanswerable to anyone else. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a one-way street to corruption. There has to be accountability in the churches. And that means there has to be accountability in your walk in faith. So who are you confessing your sins to? Who are you accountable to in your own spiritual journey? That has been the tradition and the teaching of the apostles for 2,000 years. Why do you think you're excused? Okay, I could go on and give other examples, but you kind of get my point. No church is perfect. Every church I mentioned is a Christian church, and there's all things, there's things for all of us to guard against. Any questions? Okay, so I would say that if a church denies the teachings of the Nicene Creed, it has crossed a line that we cannot compromise on. If a church contradicts the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed, they are not a Christian church. However, there are certain ethical lines that Christians can't compromise on, such as blessing sin. Churches cannot bless that which is a sin. And a church that does has gone into heresy. Therefore, the Church of England is a church that is now blessing sin and should be recognized as being out of communion with other churches. But, individu but that doesn't mean there aren't lots of Christians still inside the Church of England, because there are. And the Church of England could be retaken for Christ if only Christians would apply simple sociological truths, like taking over positions of power, influence and authority within the church, like deliberately taking over the seminaries and then filtering out the heterodox and letting in the orthodox and those who are sympathetic to the orthodox. That's how you capture an institution. The Liberals have been doing that for decades. They never bother to fight arguments like we're all inclined to do. They just go after HR. They just go after the seminary. And once they've captured HR, they filter out everyone that disagrees with them. And then soon the entire organization is filled with people that agree with them. That's the tactic that they use again and again and again. And now, ladies and gentlemen, they're doing it in your schools and they are going after your children. If they can do it, you can do it. But because we've neglected this battle for so long, we must consolidate first and therefore we must adopt the Benedict option as a first step to recapturing institutions like schools and church fellowships. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? There's a few, but I'll just give you one. What, what can be done about the Pope? Obviously, he's blessing gay marriage. He can't do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, it has been widely publicized that the Pope has blessed gay marriage. The debate is, however, that he, has, that he has not sanctioned the blessing of a marriage, but blessing of two individuals. It's the equivalent of what's called a general blessing. Put your hand up if you're a sinner. Right. 
Put your hand up if you ever went to church having committed a sexual sin. Did you receive a blessing in that church? Yes, you did in the general blessing. So, so sexual sins don't mean that you can't receive a general blessing because a general blessing is that you move out of your sin towards something that is good. Specific blessings are actual blessings where the church says, we agree with what you're doing. Like, if I ask a priest to bless my evangelism, I'm, I'm asking the priest, do you agree with my evangelism? Does the church agree with my evangelism? If he blesses my evangelism, he says that the church agrees with my evangelism. That's why if the church blesses a heterosexual marriage, it's because the church believes in heterosexual marriage. The church has no authority to bless gay marriages. So even if the Church of England says that you can, the priest can't. And if he attempts to, that blessing doesn't exist because it is Christ that does the blessing, not the priest. And Christ does not bless gay marriage. So even if the Pope, even if the Pope, even if the Pope was to say that you could bless gay marriage, Christ will not be doing the blessing and so there is no blessing of gay marriage, gay ladies people. and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, Luca yeah. is someone who looks for attention. Uh, ad hominems He's again. looking for attention right now. Did he not just I call me a homophobe? Yeah. I don't care about was that an ad hominem? He was, he was. Because He's looking are. for clickbait. Uh, clickbait. Clickbait. Uh, I don't have a channel. So he became a Muslim for clickbait. Oh, no, he I became didn't. a Muslim because they promised him a wife. Oh, you, got a wife. <laughs> <laughs> you hate gay Ladies people, and gentlemen. You hate Muslims. He told me in that hotel over there yeah. to my face that he wanted to be able to marry children. Oh. No, I didn't. That's a lie. He told me yeah. in the hotel over there yeah. that he wanted to own now, slaves. Ooh. You're lying. We have him on camera defending both things. Oh. I've changed my mind about those things. And he abandoned Islam. Oh, okay, okay. I've changed he my mind He abandoned Islam. Slaves. He abandoned Islam my mind about for Islam. clickbait because they didn't give him the wife that they promised him. <laughs> Did they, Ali Dawa? I don't have a YouTube channel, so how could I be looking for clickbait? So, ladies and gentlemen, so, ladies and gentlemen. You hate Muslims, and you now shown yourself to hate gay people as well. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you. You try to incite If I state, people, ladies and gentlemen, in, in, uh, the center, that theologically there can be no blessings of gay marriage, is that any hateful march. statement to gay people? No. no. Yes, no. It is. And this you is the mistake of the liberal world. You're a homophobe. The liberal world. Oh, yeah. No, don't play up to him, JC. The liberal world, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah makes the same dumb category error that Luca fascist. has just made. They confuse the idea of hating sin with hating the person. You're a Christian fascist. Christians don't make that mistake, liberals. We don't, ladies and gentlemen. You're a fascist. We believe in loving sinners but hating sin. Amen, amen. And that's why the church has no authority to bless sin because God hates sin. Amen. And so You're God does hate. not bless sin. And so the church cannot bless sin no matter what any pope or archbishop or council or synod says. <laughs>